Welcome into the Draft Network Senior Bowl coverage brought to you by Mercedes-Benz Corporate Sales. I'm Paige DeMacos, and guys, we are not outside. I got Trevor Sigma and John Ledyard, and yesterday you saw us, and we looked a little cold, and that is why we are inside today, was, because, you, because guess what? They canceled practice outdoors, and now we're indoors, and today we are doing a mock draft, and I know the fans have zero excitement about mock drafts, guys. Oh, yeah, zero no, excitement. Yeah. People don't go crazy over no. mock drafts or oh, anything. They've yeah. never done anything far side, huh? Yeah. <laughs> no, they're never coming great or anything. Exact yeah. opposite, actually. Yeah, right. um, yeah. So you guys are a little excited about today's mock draft, correct? I'm very excited because I've got the first pick, and you know me, I like to shake things up. I know you do. I know you do. I know you're you're going to ruin this thing 30 seconds in. So, so. before we get into that, though, we are doing the first round only, okay? So just the first round, we're going 1 to 32. We will give you all the picks, and the first pick is the Arizona Cardinals, and that means that John Ledyard is on the clock. Yes, so who are you taking? First. Well... A lot of people would go Nick Bosa in this situation, and I get it. He's a great, he's a dynamic player. It's clearly a position of need for them. Get somebody like that across from Chandler Jones would be great, but you already have the elite edge pass rusher. Why not get what maybe team. still the best player in the draft You think Quinn might Williams. be the best player. So I think he might be. You, so, and they need interior defensive line help. They've needed that for a long time now. I think he fits the huge need that they have in Arizona. Yep. Plus, pairing him next to Chandler Jones, that defense could suddenly get a dynamic playmaker in a different position. And you still have Marcus Golden, who's more than capable working his way back from injury still and it wasn't at himself last year but right. I think he can continue along that path I think you can end up in a great pick with Quinn and Williams at number one it's hard to miss on one and if you do that's how people lose their jobs so mm -hmm. Steve Kime you better be making a good pick at number one overall John gave you his pick Trevor the San Francisco 49ers for are is, on the clock and really man easy. oh man I think I know where you're going yeah this is really easy for me um, this is gonna be Nick Bosa because the 49ers they struggle with getting turnovers. They could probably use some secondary help, but you know, you're playing the draft. You want to get the guys who are at the top, and you want to make sure you get the best players at the top of the draft. Like Paige just said, you can't really miss on it. So you never want to reach too far. Nick Bosa, man, he's he's awesome, and he's perfect for what the 49ers want to do. They have a lot of talent along that defensive line, but they don't have this piece. This could be the piece that really puts them over the top, helps that secondary, gets those turnovers, really turns around this defense pretty quickly. And so Nick Bosa, I think, is an edge defender. It makes total sense for San Francisco, no matter what they want to do. Yeah. All right, the New York Jets at the number three spot. They need some help around Sam Darnold. So who are they going to take to help him out? I thought about getting crazy with this pick. I really did. But at the end of the day, Josh Allen just made too much sense. They need edge pass rush You're help You're ruining so, much. so many people's dreams because so many people want Wanted Josh Allen. Yes, off I know, of this, I know, so. I know. Everybody behind. But at the same time, there's still more dynamic pass rushers in this class. There are. We're I don't. I, the Jets have a lot of options with this pick, I think. They could go a couple different directions. But Josh Allen makes so much sense. He's a diverse scheme fit. I think there's a lot that goes into that uh, for the Jets. I think that they can do some different things with him, which is going to be huge. They need a playmaker. They need somebody, I think, who can be dynamic on a lot of different levels. So I love Josh Allen as a fit for this team. I think that he makes perfect sense and it fills a need that's been there for a long time. All right. You know, we're going to hear a lot from this guy in the draft, and that's John Gruden. And you have the fourth overall pick, so you get to, if you'd like to do the impersonation, I'm here for it. John Gruden, who are you picking with number four? Yeah, I'll tell you what, man. There's a player <laughs> name. I'm sorry. Uh, there's a, Devin White is who I'm going with, a linebacker. And it makes a lot of sense for John Gruden because I know that he's got that 10-year contract. He's got time. He can buy time with that but he wants to win right away. When you win right away, it's because you get good players on your team. Mm -hmm. Devin White, I know Oakland would be a team that really wants a guy like Josh Allen, but I think Devin White is such a good football player that they're gonna take the bait on. One of my favorite Gruden quotes is he said that guys in this league, they're either play yours or they're play yours. And he always <laughs> said that he wants play yours, okay? I think Devin oh White's a play your. I think, he's gonna, I think he's gonna love him. I'm gonna need some clarification on that one, John, what a play versus a play <laughs> is. Uh, let's, let's go to let's, let's go to number Gruden five, is. the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. My guy, Bruce Arians, as the new head coach and Jason Light, who are they taking at number five? Well, don't I think blow they, it. Don't blow it. Don't blow I, it. A lot, of, pre team. I will a lot of pressure. Go if you blow. This is Trevor's team. Okay. This is my boss JC's team. So I am. Uh, this is. A I feel lot of pressure. power, but also pressure in this situation. <laughs> So why not give him Ed Oliver? You know, this guy was, a lot of people thought he was the best player in the draft for a long time. He makes perfect sense there with Gerald McCoy. It looks like they're moving to on from Gerald McCoy probably this offseason in some way, yep. shape, or form. So I think, to be honest, Ed Oliver has all the traits, the athleticism, the explosiveness, the playmaking ability. Yes, he needs a little bit of work on his technique. He needs a little bit of development in those ways. But guys, 
Ed Oliver to the Bucks and this defense, Bruce yeah. Arians and all every I mean it just makes so much sense. This right. is a position they value. He fits the need. You didn't blow it. Good you job. didn't blow Very it. Proud. Good job. Very Good proud. job. You passed First the time test. For everything. Uh, Listen, there is a lot that is needed for the New York Giants, and I'm very interested on whether or not you're going to give them a quarterback, because that is definitely a position of need, and they didn't go there last year, and it's very controversial. So who are you giving them this I year? I would have given them a quarterback last year, yeah. but this year I think it's a little bit different. I think that they're fully committed to Eli. I think maybe you, maybe you get a quarterback if you like one that falls later in the draft, but honestly, when I think about this Giants team and where they could, they, they need help the most, I think it's offensive line. Yeah. And I think a guy like Cody Ford from Oklahoma makes a ton of sense for them because this is a guy who, and John, you know this, you pointed this out, he had great tape at right tackle, mm -hmm. but even if you kick him inside, even if you want him to play that right guard, imagine pairing a guy like that with Will Hernandez on the inside. You're talking about a nasty yeah. interior offensive line, and that'll really boost, I think, the production of everybody. All those playmakers then, uh, with taking Saquon Barkley, Odell Beckham, all those guys, I think it'll boost them really quick. Yeah, poor Eli was on his back a lot, so he's gonna need he's gonna need a lot of help, and that's a good place to start. How about the Jacksonville Jaguars, another team that could be looking for a quarterback? Because I don't think that Blake Bortles is the future. John, who it you picking? It could be a situation where they want to trade up in the real draft because yep. yeah, really two teams in my mind in the first round really desperately as we stand right now in January need a quarterback: Miami Dolphins and the Jacksonville Jaguars. To me, Jacksonville, I think. If you look at what their roster and you look at what they need, if they get a quarterback, they can even be a good distributor, they can even make that offense run at an efficient pace, they allow them to maximize the run game, which is what they love to do. I think that's the ticket for Jacksonville. To me, I don't know what the upside is with Dwayne Haskins. I don't know that he's an elite thrower of the football or anything like that, but short to intermediate range, which is how that offense operates right now, and Doug Marone still being there, means that largely it'll still operate that way. I think that's where he can have success. So to me, Dwayne Haskins makes perfect sense for the Giants at number, or for the Jags at number seven. Yeah. All right, the Detroit Lions, Matt Patricia, who are they going with because this season was a huge letdown in Detroit so I, I hate saying there's huge expectations there but they're on the back half of Stafford's time as a right. quarterback in yeah. this league and they have a window right in their opinion they need to start winning no question yeah. about it and so you've got to take a really good player here and a player who I think would fit them a lot I know they can kind of decide between corner and edge rusher but I am going to give him an edge rusher I'm going to give him Cleveland Farrell and I thought Farrell you know, along with the rest of that Clemson group, you look at him and Christian Wilkins and you thought, man, why did you guys go back last year? You would have been maybe first round, top 15 picks, and a top 15 for Farrell. But it's weird because I do think both of them increased their stocks. I thought Farrell, he had his most productive year when it came to stats. Uh, and so I've got to think that he is solidified in that top 15. I think with the system that Patricia wants to run, he makes perfect sense with the body that he has, the style of a defensive end that he is, and so I'm giving him the edge rusher there. All right, let's move on to pick number nine. That means we are going to the Buffalo Bills. Guys, John, this is your time. Joe, yes. we'll let are you, you know if yes. you blow it. Pressure Who are again. you picking with the number nine overall pick? Pressure again. Joe Marino, <laughs> Bills fan, just offset right now. So I feel some pressure again. but. Jonah good. Williams, you can't go wrong with no, him, right? I you mean, really can't. I, no, okay, will Jonah him. Williams be an elite player? I think that's the question, right? Will he be a very good player? Yes. Will he be an elite player? That's the question. If he is, will it be a tackle or a guard? Mm -hmm. Buffalo needs a little bit of both. I think he steps in. He starts at left tackle right away. Uh, I think this is the guy you want on your offensive line out of this draft. I know there's been some questions. It feels like his stock is falling in January. Guess what? We got a long way to go. Jonah yeah. Williams' stock is going to come back up. Buffalo taking him at number nine makes a ton of sense. Yep. The last pick here, pick number 10, the Denver Broncos. John Elway, you're on the clock. Who are you taking? John Elway last year at the Combine said, it was asked about getting a quarterback, and he said, you've swung and missed at getting a quarterback, and he kind of smirked, and he said, and I'm going to keep swinging until I get one. So Ooh, here I, like I have that. him swinging, and I'm going to give it a little bit of senior bowl feel. I'm going to have them taking Drew Locke, and I really okay. think that it's – I think that Haskins is probably gone at this point. Right. So – Man, I think that Locke's probably going to be the most alluring options for NFL teams. And so you see the arm, but what's most encouraging to me about, about Drew Locke is that he knows where he needs to get better. We saw that when we were talking to him at the podium the last two days, and it seems like he's going to work on that a lot. So if you give me that arm, you give me that mentality that he knows exactly where he needs to get better, I like the fitting for Denver. I really do. Guys, this was fun. We went 1 through 10 pretty quickly here. We're going to go 11 through 20 coming up after the break. I want to remind you guys, this is great content that you're getting right now, but each and every week you can watch the draft or listen to the draft dudes with Kyle Krabs and Joe Marino. They do a fantastic job. So that's a that's a little teaser, a little a little love for my guys at the draft dudes. So we will be right back with picks 11 through 20. 
John Ledger, Trevor Sycamore here from thedraftnetwork.com. We're doing a little NFL Draft Word Association. I'm going to give Trevor a prospect name. Nervous. Trevor, you've got to describe, you've got to say the word that comes to mind. when I, A word or phrase. I'll let you even do phrase. Oh, okay. A word or phrase <laughs> that comes to mind when I say this prospect's name. You ready? Uh, no, but let's do it. I'll start off with an easy one. Ja'Kai Polite. Oh, speed. Joshua Jacobs. Toughness. Oh, good one. Chase Winovich. You already used toughness. Ooh, um, limited. Travis Fulgham. Don't know. BJ Blunt. Oh, energy. Inkeel Harry. Alpha. Justice Hill. Underrated. Jalen Ferguson. Ooh, um, potential. J.J. Arcega Whiteside. Um, playmaker. Kyler Murray. Oh, I just used playmaker. Um, stud. That's what I'm gonna say. It's a pretty good job. There I threw go. Fulgham in there because I want to throw a wild name at you. I know. Was I'm, not ready for it. I want to throw a wild was name. Was not at you ready for it. That was a good job, though. <laughs> good job by Trevor Sikkim of Word Association. Check out thedraftnetwork.com for more great coverage on the 2019 NFL Draft. Welcome back to the Draft Network Senior Bowl coverage. As you can tell, we're not doing a practice report. We are doing a mock draft, and I've got Ben Solak, and I've got Brad Kelly out here. Guys, we're doing picks 11 through 20. We want to give a big shout out to Mercedes-Benz Corporate Sales. Thank you guys for being a part of our time out here. They're going to be a part of our show tomorrow as well. And we want to make sure that you guys are following us across all social media channels, because guess what? The Draft Network has a lot of social content, and I've got to make sure you're on Twitch, you're on YouTube, you're connecting with us on Instagram. We want to make sure you guys are getting all that stuff. But now it's time to get into a pick. Pick number 11. That's you, Ben. Who are you taking? Yeah, since he's a tough team to pick for, because we don't really know what they're going to be doing as far as what the coaching staff looks like. They could use some offensive line help, but I'm going linebacker. Mac Wilson out of Alabama. They don't have a good coverage linebacker right now, and that's killing them in the short passing game. Mac Wilson, as a depth of a coverage linebacker at the, at the college level, as you'll see in short zones, a lot of quickness, really good awareness. Preston Brown, he replaces. Vontaze Burfick should be out of Cincinnati. He's not a good player anymore. Oh, wow. You're calling, you're calling for people losing their jobs already. This is, uh, this is you're taking shots early on. I love it. Nice I love play. it. All right, the Green Bay Packers at pick number 12 who are you taking well in Mike Payton's 3-4 defense I think they need an outside linebacker and that's going to be Brian Burns from Florida State this yep. is a team that was only 29th in takeaways last season Clay Matthews is going to be 32 years old had less than four sacks Brian Burns is an explosive edge rusher around the around the edge can shorten the shorten the track to the quarterback get home has 13 and a half sacks in his last 12 games against power five competition Brian Burns is the pick. They need that speed badly. You're dropping slow. knowledge. I love it. We're dropping sack totals. We're dropping everything. And Green Bay needs a lot of help. Another team, new coaching staff, but they haven't even solidified everything that's going on. And that is the Miami Dolphins at pick number 13. Who are you taking? Yeah, I got back-to-back -back new coaching staff. Yes, so I got you a lot do. Of, I got a lot of freedom. I got to do what I want. Listen, Miami needs a quarterback. And they're in tank season at this point. This is a team that's been mired in mediocrity for so long, just hanging around 8-8. Eight and eight. You need to do something bold. You need to see if you can hit on a guy, Kyler Murray, out of Oklahoma. He would break a lot of the Ooh. tendencies we see for good quarterbacks. But listen to me. He's a dynamic athlete with a wicked arm. There are questions about processing. There's questions about his ability to stay under control in the pocket. But, hey, if it doesn't work, you're just drafting in an earlier spot two years from now. Jim Caldwell is likely an offensive mind they would bring in to work with Kyler Murray under whoever the new head coach is there, probably Ryan Flores. Again, Murray is a high-risk and I, I, or a high risk option. That isn't really too much of a problem if he doesn't pan out. All right, listen, I knew Kyler Murray was going to go in the first round because yeah. you don't yep. say no to baseball unless you know you're going to go early and have some guaranteed money. All right, pick number 14, Atlanta Falcons. Who are you taking? This is a pick. This pick is about finding someone on the interior defensive line next to Grady Jarrett. That spot's currently occupied by Terrell McLean, a 30-year-old journeyman. I'm going with Jeffrey Simmons from Mississippi State. Good player. Great interior uh, disruptor, great against the run. Very good value at this point because of some off the field concerns. It's going to push them out of the top 10. I think that this is a perfect marriage for them, especially because they were 25th against the run last season. 
number 15, the Washington Redskins, they had some, some troubles with injuries. They were, were having success, and then two quarterbacks go down, and they're on a third string, guys. So we still don't know what's going on with Alex Smith. Pick number 15, who are you bringing to Washington? Listen, when you're playing on, on FedEx Field right now, you're going to be dealing with injuries. But to me, this is a run-up to the podium. This is one of the best picks we've seen so far Ooh, in this draft. Calling his shot He's already. Metcalf, wide receiver out of Ole Miss. Stunned. They don't build him like Metcalf. Metcalf was benching 100 pounds in first grade. Dude is chiseled, impossibly fast and strong at the release point. That's going to give them a great downfield presence. Remember, Jordan Reed was one of the best red zone targets at tight end for quite some time. He's losing his efficacy. They need a bigger body back there. And I don't know if Josh Dawson, the TCU wide receiver they drafted a couple years ago, is going to pan out. Metcalf is an excellent X receiver. Pairs with Jamison Crowder in the slot. Metcalf's a home run, home run pick. 100 pounds in the first grade. I hope you all caught that uh, back uh, there on Twitter. Uh, the Carolina Panthers pick number 16. Another team looked hot at points in the season. Then they played the Pittsburgh. Steelers and it was all downhill from there. What are they doing at 16? Well, it's funny we didn't have a receiver until pick 15 because now we're going to have two in a row. Makes sense. Kelvin Harmon out of NC State. I think Devin Funches is out the door in Carolina. They have a good promising receiver in DJ Moore. Curtis Samuel took two, a step forward in year two. McCaffrey's a dynamic threat out of the backfield, but they need some size if Funches leaves. Harmon provides that. Uh, he reminds me of Miles Austin, the former Cowboys Chelsea. receiver, consistent technical route runner. Height, weight, speed, he has it all. I think they're very comfortable projecting him as a wide receiver one in, a, in an NFL offense. I hate to put the expectations on you, but I'm going to do it. Okay. Because the Cleveland Browns, the first money to come in for Super Bowl next year was on the Cleveland Browns. How the about fans that? are through the roof. So who are they taking at pick number 17? Cleveland made waves in 2017 when they selected Denzel Ward a corner over Bradley Chubb and Edge. Here we are, 2019 draft. I'm telling you right now, they're taking a corner over an edge. We're going Ooh, with Byron okay. Murphy out of Washington. Good player. New defensive coordinator there, Steve Wilkes. He's going to run a cover three scheme, and they have Denzel Ward. He's going to be strong there. Byron Murphy comes straight out of a cover three scheme that he was running in Washington, impossibly quick. Great instinct, love to attack the football. Yes, they're going to be a little undersized on the outside, I get it, but the ball production is going to be unbelievable. And hey, pass rushers, Jannard Avery out of the fifth round last year could rush the passer. They're going to be just fine. All right, they, they, you heard it here first. They're going to be just fine. Uh, this is what I would call my disappointing team of the season. The Minnesota Vikings at pick number 18, they were coming back off of one of their best seasons and struggled mightily. So. At pick number 18, who are they taking to help that roster? It's going to be Yanni Kajus, the, yeah, the offensive lineman out of West Virginia. They need help on the interior. Uh, I think Yanni Kajus, despite playing left tackle, he only weighs 308 pounds, but he has that strength, that nasty streak, and that athleticism as a former high school basketball player to project into guard. I think that he's going to be a great interior offensive lineman in the NFL. Number 19, the Tennessee Titans. Who are you taking here, Ben? I've taken a corner for the Tennessee Titans for quite some time, and the fans keep yelling at me, and they say they don't need one. Oh, they need one. I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen for right now. I'm going to give them an edge opposite Harold Landry, who they used to have running there. Now, Landry is a, a great bender, a bit of an injury-prone guy who they drafted in the second round out of Boston College. I'm going to give him a great bender on the other side, Ja'Kai Palay out of Florida. I think Palay is going to bring probably about the same size as Landry, but I think he's a better run defender, and he works inside counters better a little bit, too. He's got great power. Listen. They're getting old. Brian Arakpo, Derek Morgan, Jarrell Casey. They need to bring youth to the pass rush. That's Ja'Kai Polite right away. I think, you know what? Another slam dunk pick. I know it's my own pick, but I think it's a great one. Here's the thing. When you're giving yourself a grade for your own picks, I would <laughs> hope that you would baby. give yourself Always. a good grade. So fans of the Tennessee Blind Titans, colors. feel free to hit him up on Twitter and let him know if you actually like the pick. Last one here, number 20, the Pittsburgh Steelers, my second disappointing team of the, uh, of the year last year. Who are they adding to this roster? Well, John was feeling pressure in the first segment. I'm feeling pressure right now to fix oh, his yep. He's glaring at you from behind the camera, so you better bring the heat here. I'm going to go Greedy Williams, cornerback out of LSU. He's got to like that. He's got to like that. Uh, he should, because they need help. Only eight interceptions last season, 28th in the league in interceptions. Very bad. Really Joe Hayden's an above average corner. He's going to be 30 by the start of next season. Cody Sensabaugh, Artie Burns, they've never lived up to their expectations in Pittsburgh. I mean, Greedy Williams is a former potential top five pick. I think that this is great value for him at pick 20. Guys, the Pittsburgh Steelers defense wasn't good. I didn't know that. They were. I thought they, I thought they were top tier this year. Uh, <laughs> guys, I want to tell you about the Locked On podcast with John Ledger, the Pittsburgh guy behind the camera, and Trevor Sikama. You guys should definitely check that out. That content goes on all year long. Their podcast long. is amazing, and you should definitely listen to it. But I will be back. These two will be gone. Kyle Krabs and Joe Marino are coming in to finish this mock draft. 
Hopefully you guys are watching and tweeting at us because I want to know if you like the picks or you hate the picks because I'm not Brad, making any of the picks. Like so the pick. feel I'm free curious. to be as honest as you want. We'll be right back. All right, Joe Marino and Kyle Krabs here for a little bit of NFL Draft Word Association. I don't want it. I'm going to give you 10 words it. that you don't know what they're going to be, but I do. They're right here on my phone, and you are tasked with giving a one-word reaction yes. to the word I give you. Yes. Kyle, are you ready for this? No. Well, too late. It is time to go. You've got 10 of these things coming up. The first word, Benny Snell. Good. Slow feet. Greg Little. <laughs> Oakland Raiders. <laughs> Disarray. Value. Round three. Riley Ridley. Litmus test. Reach. Josh Allen. Da <laughs> Dawson Knox. Underappreciated. Seattle Seahawks. System. Bryce Love. Mistake. Trade up. Denver Broncos. All right, Kyle, you're off the hot seat. Thanks for tuning in to this word association. Check out thedraftnetwork.com for your 2019 NFL draft coverage. this mock draft and I brought the draft dudes to hang out with me. That's Kyle Krabs and Joe Marino. Oh. I know you guys don't like doing mock drafts at all. No, so you're not excited about well, this listen, guys at all. Listen, Paige, we were on the stream reading the comments uh -huh. and we know we have a very raucous crowd oh right boy. now. So we need to calm the waters down like the ones behind us. We got chill them out a little bit. <laughs> you're going to calm them down somehow. I don't think that the fans are going to be calmed down. I, you guys can see right now, we've got a couple of things going on left for the Senior Bowl. Tomorrow, we are also going to have a show, 5.30 Central Time. You're going to want to check that out on Twitter. But guess what's happening now? Joe, yes. you're officially on the clock. The Seattle Seahawks, who last year, I hosted a draft show with these two, and probably the fan base that was most mad at these guys was the Seattle Seahawks. So do you redeem yourself? <laughs> Well, I'm going to try, but the Seattle Seahawks happen to be one of the weirdest drafting teams out there, and yep. you just never know what they're going to do. And one of the hardest players to slot in this year's draft is Rashawn Gary from Michigan. If there's a spot that it makes sense, it's Seattle. This is the type of athlete they like to invest in, a guy that is explosive off the ball. Maybe he, we need to figure out if he's an inside or an outside guy, but that type of athletic ability is what Seattle typically gravitates for and gives them a guy on the front seven. Kyle? It's now your turn to choose. You are John Harbaugh. You are hanging out in yep. Baltimore. It is the next pick, and Kyle, you are choosing. Well, listen, they went out and they got a franchise quarterback in Lamar Jackson with the 32nd pick in last year's draft. And I need to get this guy some weapons. And one of Lamar's biggest strengths is general accuracy. He, he can make good decisions, but he doesn't have pinpoint accuracy. So I want to get somebody that can create a lot of consistent separation. Marquise Hollywood Brown the wide receiver out of Oklahoma. This dude is a burner. He's a deep threat. He can really help take the top off the defense and further open up this rushing attack for the Baltimore Ravens. Joe, we're back to you. The Houston Texans are on the clock, and you are going with? Well, somebody give Brian Gain, the general manager for the Houston Texans, a sticky note that says, offensive line, no matter what. Okay, so I love it. The, the, the abuse that Deshaun Watson is getting this year and in the, in the last year is we're getting close to Russell Wil Wilson levels. We yeah. need to get this man some protection. How about Andre Dillard from Washington State? This is a guy that projects nicely as an NFL pass blocker, good length. He moves laterally very well. And so when I need a guy to mirror these, these twitched up edge rushers that the NFL features, I got a guy here in Dillard that has the foot speed to do that. He needs to get a little bit stronger, but this is a guy that I feel comfortable about as a blindside protector for Deshaun Watson. Guess who's back? Back again. Oh, oh, Shady's back? Shady's back. No, this is uh, my guy, John Gruden in Oakland, and he's making his second pick. <laughs> I get to call him my guy because uh, thanks for Khalil Mack, John. Uh, who are you taking? Who are you taking here? Hey, I'll tell you what. Oh, man. here we go. We're going to take Montez Sweat, defensive end, Mississippi State. This guy was a weigh-in winner. He really impressed yesterday with some of his speed to power. They need to replace the pass rush of Khalil Mack as gracious, so, or Paige just so graciously reminded every <laughs> Uh, Oakland Raiders fan of that trade. Uh, Montez Sweat doesn't necessarily have elite bend, but he does have good first step. He's really lean. He's really long. Those are qualities that NFL teams really like in a pass rush. 
Uh, we're going to the Philadelphia Eagles next, and it's your opportunity to tell Philly what they need. They're over the cap. They got to they gotta make sure they're getting a good guy in the first round because a lot of the guys on their team right now are going to be on the way out. You know, everybody got up here and talked about how nervous they were yeah. about making picks for another staff member's team. But I was smart. I cleared this <laughs> with Mr. <laughs> Benjamin Solek. Before, nice work. Look, look I want to make my guy happy, Ben Solek. We're going with Nasir Adderley, the safety from Delaware. Philly needs help on the back end. If you watch them down the stretch, they really struggled to stop up, stop giving up big plays to other teams. Adderley's a guy that I feel comfortable playing him in multiple positions. He can line up deep in deep zones. He can line up in man coverage. He's physical, aggressive, ball skills, return game upside. I, I mean, he checks a lot of boxes. One of my favorite players in this class can really help this Eagles defense. The Indianapolis Colts, one of the bounce back teams this year, and yeah. mostly to do with the offensive line finally finally blocking for Andrew Luck. Who are they adding to that roster to make this team even better next well, season? Well, I'll tell you what, a lot of the success for this team was centered around the fact that they found their identity as a physical offensive front. Let's talk about the defensive line now. I want some guys that are going to pound the tar out of you. Christian Wilkins, defensive tackle, this dude is a bowling ball. And he is really disruptive, really versatile. I love the fact that he can play defensive end. He can play three technique. Shoot, this guy played on the punt teams at Clemson mm -hmm. as a senior. He did everything. Who does that? This dude loves football, would be a great fit, add extra elements for the Clemson or for the Indianapolis Colts up front. All right, John Gruden is back, back again. <laughs> and now it is your Ooh. time to be John Gruden, there Joe. Is. So there's the oh, face. I was looking for it. We're ready for John Gruden to make his next pick. Who's he taking? I'll tell you what, guys. We need to get us the next factor at tight end to replace Jared Cook. Now listen, Jared Cook, a sensational season this year for the Oakland Raiders. But how much longer is he going to play? His contract's up. Is this a player that Oakland at this stage in its rebuild is going to want to invest big dollars in? We can get his replacement with one of our three first-round picks. How about Iowa tight end Noah Fant? He is that X factor. He is a seam buster, the kind of guy that you can line up flexed out, out outside the line of scrimmage and make plays to all levels of the field. He is dynamic. He's the type of player that Gruden needs to make sure that his offense is clicking. And Fant is, is a really high upside guy, really thrilled to get this pick. Like Ben Solak was high about all of his picks. This is one of my favorites so far for me. Uh, Kyle, the L.A. Chargers got Patriots, okay? Yes. They, they went in and the Patriots put on a coaching clinic on Anthony Lynn and the L.A. Chargers. So. Who are they going to add to this roster so they can they can defend their turf in the AFC and maybe finally kick the, the Patriots out of here? Well, the Patriots ran the ball down their throat. They sure did. The Chargers need some help on the defensive line. So I'm going to talk about another Clemson defensive lineman. Some is more, or some is good, more is better. Dexter Lawrence. This is a big-time, versatile nose tackle. He can, again, push the pocket. He's more of a power rusher. He's not necessarily going to impress you with his versatility with his pass rush counters, but as a true run stuffer, maybe this team can get away with playing five safeties on defense <laughs> against the Patriots next year with this dude eating blocks in the middle. Yeah, we'll see about them apples. Uh, we're staying in the division. They have their quarterback of the future. We all know that for Patrick Mahomes, but this team needs help on one side of the football drastically. Mm -hmm. Are we gonna go defense for the Kansas City Chiefs? Well, we better, because this, yeah. this Chiefs offense, outstanding. This Chiefs defense, not so much. We're gonna go with Georgia cornerback, DeAndre Baker, this is the guy that can finally give them a player on the back end that gives you upside in man coverage, a guy that's very disruptive at the line of scrimmage, very comfortable with his ball skills, made a lot of strides this year, had a great senior season, first round type player and the type of impact corner that the Chiefs really need if they're going to be really a, a true Super Bowl winning threat. The Green Bay Packers are back on the clock again. Yeah. They are looking at a window. 36 year old Aaron Rodgers next year. They got a time frame coming off another major injury, a concussion at the end of last season. They know they have to add to this team. So who are they going to add and is it going to be an impact guy right away? Well, I was really nervous when Joe said he was going to take an impact tight end. But like an idiot, he mm. blew the pick. You took the wrong Iowa tight end. Oh, boy. TJ Hawkinson, redshirt sophomore. This kid is a do-it-all. He plays in line. He can get up the field. He's a physical mismatch. Uh, Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers, the opportunity to get a big contested catch player to, that could win contested catches in the red zone and a guy that can simultaneously stretch the field. I think that's a necessary add for the Green Bay Packers if they're going to get the most 
out of this offense with Aaron Rodgers at the helm? They need a tight end because Jimmy Graham's been in a big old bust. I, it hasn't worked out for them. They're paying him this year, you but they it, need. Not me. <laughs> listen, I say it how I say it how it is. It didn't work out in Seattle. It didn't work out for it with Aaron Rodgers in, in in Green Bay either. The New England Patriots. They're playing in the Super Bowl. They are always picking at the end of the draft. Who are they taking? That's going to be an impact player because we know it's going to end up being a big impact player. Well. The, the Patriots have a clear need, in my opinion, at defensive end. Guys that can rush the passer, they love long guys. Well, there's a guy here in Mobile at the Senior Bowl that checked in with 36-inch arms. I'm talking about Texas defensive end Charles Amenehu. This is a, a Patriots-type player. It really seems like he fits. Uh, the length I already mentioned, but this is a guy that really ascended throughout his career at Texas. 18 tackles for loss as a senior, nine and a half sacks. Love that he got better and better. And, and you can just see Belichick gravitating towards a player that's, that's improving, but also has a ceiling that checks that length benchmark that they really like in their defensive linemen. I think that a many to the Patriots would be a really good fit here at the end of the first round. We've made it to the final pick of the first round. Yes. Kyle, you are picking for the LA Rams. Who are they picking with the last pick well, in the first you round? Listen closely. You can hear all of Patriots Nation erupting <laughs> in rage that they're picking 31st. But for the Rams, I look at this defense. This offense is very potent, very explosive. I'd like to get some speed on the second level for this defense. Michigan linebacker Devin Bush is a player who I thought took very promising strides forward this year. As far as his ability to play off of contact, he trusts his speed. He might not necessarily be the fastest to break all plays, but he has elite speed, and that allows him to get back into a contested position and run down ball carriers. Guys, we've officially made it. We made it through the whole first round. It feels like we should probably get into the second round, but we're not going to do that today. You're not going to get a second round mock draft Sorry. today. If you haven't seen, go back on Periscope, rewind, see all the picks. The first round, we went through every single team. We want to hear from you guys, so hit us up on Twitter. Let us know whether you like or don't like any of the picks. I'm sure there is some disagreement out there in the Twitter's verse because you guys know how Twitter works, right? Yeah, you guys know there's a little a, bit. usually a little bit of anger uh, when it comes to when it comes to picks. But I want to make sure you guys all know that tomorrow, 5:30 Central Time, we will be back doing another Senior Bowl live show. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you tomorrow.